Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mac Flash Trivia. My name is Francois and I will be your host for the next little bit. This is Seriously Trivia. Don't let the name fool you. It is not as serious as it sounds. It's kind of ironic. You know, like irony was really cool for about eight months or so. That's when this game came out, and that's why this title exists. Hi, everybody. Welcome, students of the University of Windsor, Lancers, as you are apparently called, so I am told. My name is Francois. I'll be your host for the next little bit. I've got some trivia coming at you, and tell you what, when I was told that you needed some trivia to uh, bring a bit of a, a break to your monotony and uh, to you know entertain you guys during all these things. I was just very glad to bring you this, but also I was glad to bring you one of my favorite games. It is called Seriously Trivia, and it is a bit different. If you've seen me before, uh, you know what I do. I do trivia all around the uh, Windsor, Essex area, and uh, one of these games is, of course, seriously trivia. This is how it's going to work. Let me explain it to you. Follow through, because this is how it goes. The recommended supplies: everybody should have a whiteboard or a notepad to take uh, to keep track of your answers. And of course, uh, if you want to keep a scoreboard on your own, you know, if you've got some, uh, maybe you're in a you're in a room with multiple people uh, because that's who you're you're with uh, during this time, then maybe you compete against them as well. So there you have it. Uh, you get yourself your whiteboard, your notepad, and maybe your scoreboard. How's this gonna work? Uh, we're going to play two halves tonight, uh, each of them with eight rounds of three questions, as you can see on this example over here. It's a mix of puzzles and trivia, which is what makes it a lot of fun. Maybe you're like, I don't know trivia. That's me, for real. I'm that guy. Uh, but maybe you're like, but I, I, good word puzzle. I gotcha. I gotcha, fam. You know what I mean? Uh, and so maybe that's what it's for you. Well, this is what this game is designed for. Uh, you challenge yourself or your friends friends as a team whatever you feel is necessary uh, when every question comes up there will be uh, every category comes up there'll be three questions within it you'll get 20 seconds only per question discreetly answer the uh, the questions on your whiteboards or notepads but please refrain do not I know it's easy you're at home no one will see you it's between you and God or whoever now but please don't Google don't phone search don't whatever you need to do go with your gut and try to figure it out and uh, well good luck figuring out the puzzles because I've come up with some pretty insane games in my time when the answers come up will be immediately after we do the questions so this is an instant gratification sort of thing the moment we are done the questions we will then go to answer time I will then reveal the answers to the last three questions you will correct your own sheet or board and then keep track of your score using your preferred method at the end of each half you know you can share your score in the chat let us know what's going on but more importantly this is how you win your prizes tonight you can take a picture of yourself playing trivia right now and uh, tag it uh, at with trivia night at u of w student center and of course don't forget the hashtag mac flash trivia in there final scores uh, the other way you could win a final score submitted to the u of w student center and last but not least random players in the chat tonight will be drawn throughout the live game so be mindful of the chat option available down here on the same screen because if you are there and present and commenting when it is requested you could be drawn to win a instant prize oh my gosh that was a lot of talking i'm thirsty that's right this is not television this is youtube we can do whatever we want let's play are you guys excited to play i'm gonna look down on the chat if one person says yes i'm excited we're gonna get started oh, the first thing i saw was yay so i'm gonna take that as a sign that it's time seriously trivia on youtube goes like this here are your categories life on the chain gang celluloids as soon as you see one that you want to do first, you shout that out right there in the chat. You let me know in the chat, and that's the one we're going to play first. I've got this whiteboard right here ready to go, and I'm going to mark them down. We got songs in the key of, we got the ABCs of. Whoa, let's get back here. What do we got going on here? Well, I tell you what. 
the ABCs up. We've got an easy quiz. We got sweet 16 and we have got ourselves what a character that was close that was almost catastrophic almost catastrophic taking a look here down d -d 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 i spy that was the first thing shot we got i spy spy right over here and then what do i have songs songs and then i've got uh uh sweet 16 sweet 16 all right let's get started and then we'll shout out some more we'll shout out some more starting off with i spy Oh my. Answer these questions about spy movies. We've got three of them coming at you right now. Man, oh man. Write these down on your boards, please. Do not answer in the chat. A little reminder. Let's get started, okay? You ready? Let's do this. Number one, 20 seconds on the clock. What 1997 spy comedy had a supporting cast of Elizabeth Hurley, Seth Green, and Robert Wagner? Coming in at number two in the I Spy category. What 2012 spy thriller took home the Academy Award for Best Original Song for its opening theme song by Adele? And finally, number three in the category of spy movies. With its third installment due out in 2020, what action comedy franchise started out with two movies starring Taron Egerton and Colin Firth? Bingo, bango. That's how we tango. <laughs> I'm going to try to make that my uh, catchphrase from now on. That's what I think it's going to be. Well, there you have it, everybody. Those are the three questions in the category of I Spy. At this point, you want to lock in your answers. Uh, maybe uh, show everybody what you wrote down if you're competing against people in the same room. If not, uh, come to a decision as a team as to what your answer is going to be because here come the actual answers. The first one we were looking for in the category of spy, spy movies with that supporting cast was Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Austin Powers 1 will also be acceptable if uh, that's what you wrote down. All right, because I'm nice like that. I'm good like that. Plus, first game and all that, you're all getting used to it. Number two, we had Skyfall. That's right, Adele, the queen, as some have commented in the chat. Uh, the, uh, the That's what she wrote. She wrote the uh, theme song or sang the theme song to Skyfall. I'm not sure. I'm not going to give her credit. I don't know. I didn't look it up. I didn't look it up. All right, so I'm not going to vouch for someone I am not, you know? I mean, she might be great, but who knows? We got uh, Kingsman, The Secret Service. That is your upcoming 2020 installment of Kingsman. Uh, and uh, what a great uh, what a great franchise. Love it, love it, love it. Give yourself a point for each of those that you got correct and keep track of your score cumulatively as we go. Feel free to uh, share if you got one on three, two on three, three on three in the chat at the moment. But of course, keep track because you want to know that total score by the end of the round. Being present in the chat will give you more chances of getting drawn in one of the eventual draws. I don't even know when those happen. It's not even up to me. It's just gonna eventually, boom, somebody's gonna say, hey, 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 I just almost knocked something out on my desk. You know what I mean? All right, everybody, tally those scores, and uh, I'll see you guys back at the front. All right, so, so far you should have given yourself one point each on those last three. So uh, whatever you got right in that, that's one, two, or three out of three. So far, you can have uh, zero, one, two, or three points as we go. Uh, you know, uh, we're here, we're having fun. This is what it's all about, uh, you know, so uh, I want to take this time right now to say cheers to you guys. Thank you so much for uh, being here tonight and playing Seriously Trivia with uh, Mac Flash. And uh, cheers, that's all. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, secretly that was just an excuse to take a sip on camera because I was very, very thirsty. <laughs>
Your next category, we have songs in the key of, as uh, it was called out. And don't worry, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep typing them up. We got songs 16, easy, and ABC coming up. They've all been chosen by you, but we still got a few to choose. Let's take a look at the songs. Songs in the key of body parts. Oh, how romantic! These are all songs with body parts in the title. Uh, if you're ready, let's answer these three questions. Gonna zoom in on that because I want to know. All about growing up in the suburbs, this is Sum 41's most successful single to date. Number two for songs in the key of the body parts. What is the name of the album on which you would find Alanis Morissette's Hand in My Pocket? Oh, my favorite. Finally, number three in the songs in the key of body parts, 1998 song by the Goo Goo Dolls on the soundtrack City of Angels, later covered by many other artists. Well, there you go. That's uh, songs in the key of body parts. Let's take a look at those answers coming up in just a bit. This is where you want to lock in your answers about these three songs and uh, find out if your answers match mine. The first one we were looking for, it was the uh, biggest uh, successful, uh, most successful, biggest successful. I, I'm very French tonight for some reason. It's the most successful single by Sum 41. It is Fat Lip. There it is, Fat Lip. Uh, in at number two, we were looking at Jagged Little Pill. Jagged Little Pill, of course, the body part being in the song uh, on the album, Jagged Little Pill. And uh, we had Iris, a very, ah, uh, in your eye. That's a body part for sure. That is a song by the Goo Goo Dolls. Give yourself a point for each of those that you got correct out of three points. What did you get? Share it in the chat, tally that score at home, and I'll see you back at the front menu. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this show, and I, I'm really happy to be able to provide you this private show. This is, by the way, my first private online show. I probably shouldn't give away any sort of secrets like this, but you know what? I feel like we're, we're tight now. We're tight now. It's been two games, you know? I feel like we're friends. But uh, it's going really great. I, I hope you do enjoy this game. Feel free to join me on Fridays at 8 o'clock on my channel. I go live on Fridays. And uh, with exactly this game, Seriously Trivia on YouTube, it's fresh every Friday. And uh, you can uh, check it out then as well. So if you enjoyed tonight, make sure you do tune in Friday at 8. Your next category coming up, we have Sweet 16. You're you're gonna regret this I'll tell you right now because this is a whole category revolving around the number 16 how prevalent can that be well let's just find out we got number one what is the name of the number system used in computer science which uses a base of 16 pretty sure I've got the right audience for this question Oh my god, Nicholas, you're right, right? We should totally have a lifeline. We, we they should totally, should, you know what? Messenger me, and then I'll, I'll, I'll key you in, and then hopefully we can just do this together. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, Sweet 16, question number dose. 16 is the atomic number of the chemical element S. What element is that? Yeah, we're, hit, we're hitting some curriculum stuff here. This is curriculum level material. And 
and coming in at number three for Sweet 16, name the test which attribu attributes four preferred qualities from four categories, producing 16 personality types. It is a test. Well, how did you do on that? I think that was a pretty sweet 16. I got, I, I got the feeling maybe some people had a bit of a struggle, but I don't know. Some of you, I felt it through the, through the interwebs. I felt the vibe through the interwebs. You guys did all right. All right, uh, lock those answers in because here come my answers. Compare them and feel great and or terrible about yourselves. Let's take a look at <laughs> number one. Hexadecimal is the base 16 number system. We have decimal, binary, hexadecimal. There it is. It utilizes the uh, digits 0 to 9 and the letters E through F. Uh, we get number 2, sulfur. Sulfur, there it is. A chemical element, number 16, sulfur. And the Myers-Briggs personality test taking four personality types, four categories, making 16 different personality types. There you go, Myers-Briggs. Take a point for each of those that you got correct, and I'll see you back at the front of the line. Feel free to share your score for the uh, round as we go, but don't forget to keep track, of course, of the uh, score. Totally, because at the end, you can submit your score to U of W Student Center. That is their Instagram. Uh, you just uh, put it through there, send them your final score, and you'll be, uh, whoever has the highest score uh, will win a prize. If there's a tie, they'll just draw from the uh, top scores, of course. This is the honor system, so I do, of course, uh, expect uh, none of you to be uh, Googling or doing any sort of unsavory things like that. This is not the time to be Googling. This is the time to be playing trivia. Uh, and I figure that's what you guys are doing. So uh, let's keep moving with an easy quiz. Ah, well, this could be misleading. Easy is in quotation marks. Uh, let's take a look at what an easy quiz has in store for you today. It's all random questions revolving around the word easy. And what I like to do in there is take that word from any all sorts of angles. This is for all the stoners in the group. I'm just making really cool tribute things with my fingers for you guys. Uh, let's take a look at uh, this one. Random questions about the word easy. What movie starred Emma Stone as a college girl who lies about losing her virginity? Congratulations, uh, Madison LaPreeze. You are the first U winner. Uh, you're going to have to DM uh, the uh, U of Windsor Student Center so that they can get your details. And you are the first chat winner of the draw. That is you. Madison LaPreeze, you've been tagged in the chat, so make sure you do check that out. The instructions are in there on how you can claim your prize. Yay! This is fun. I'm really enjoying this. Let's do this every month. Oh, that'd be great. All right, let's take a look at your next one. What group had a hit in 1990 with a cover of Lionel Richie's Easy Like Sunday Morning? That song is actually credited to both Lionel Richie and the Commodores. But what group had a hit with it in 1990 with their cover? A, possibly two more uh, chat winners to go. Maybe three. We'll see how it goes, says the student center. I like your confidence. That's what it is. Uh, let's take a look at your last question regarding the word easy. What popular toy sold 16 million units from 1963 to 1997 and is still in production today? Category, an easy quiz.
I really do appreciate everyone in the chat being so positive and nice and thank you for all the comments I the feedback on the categories is what I look forward to a lot because then I know how to tweak the game like I always say I do this for you guys so you might as well tell me what you want to see and there's no point in me just showing off that you know hey look I can write questions I like your feedback so thank you very much all right lock in those answers this was an easy quiz we'll have to see uh, here come my answers compare them to these hmm? easy a that is the movie where the girl Emma Stone lies about her virginity that's right easy a we had faith no more easy like Sunday easy like Sunday morning And uh, the cover was actually pretty good too. Yeah, I gotta say, the original's better, obviously. And uh, last one, Easy Bake Oven. They still make the Easy Bake Oven. That fire trap is still available for commercial purchase. I know, I'm as flabbergasted as you are. All right, everybody, give yourself a point for each of those that you got correct. And uh, let's get back to the front. We are halfway through the game already, but don't worry, I have another round after this of another eight categories. This is only the first half of the game, so uh, four, four categories here left in the first half, and then after that, another eight uh, categories. We're going to take a very short break in between, just so everybody can freshen up, maybe run to the fridge, get another glass of water, or whatever it is that you need to do during a break. You know, people get habits, you know, whether it's uh, eating, drinking, breathing staying alive whatever it happens to be uh we'll come back we'll have eight more categories and uh, we'll keep playing all night it's the score at the end of the night that counts so keep track of that score and be honest i mean be cool you know this is called seriously trivia we take things seriously over here yeah all right your next category we're looking down it's the abcs of what is it the abcs of robotics why did I pick this? Because why not? I mean, uh, here's the thing. The ABCs of, this is how this works. Every question, uh, the answer will uh, start with A, uh, then B, then C. Uh, that's how it goes uh, as the category goes, and they're all going to be apparently about robotics. So, let's get started. Hopefully, we got some smarty pants in the group. An early self-operating robot performing exactly the same actions automatically. What is the A word for this? Coming up, we got number two. This answer starts with B, because it is the ABCs of robotics. Number two starts with B, the application of methods and systems found in nature to engineering and technology. What is the B word? Last one, it starts with the letter C, a being with both biological and artificial, for example, uh, electronic, mechanical, or robotic parts. Well, there you have it. That's the ABCs of robotics. Every answer started with the letter A, then B, then C. And that's your hint for that one. Let's take a look at your answers while I take a look at mine. If you wish, if you, I mean, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I, don't, I was gonna do a joke, but you know, at this point, let's just keep going. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, your first one starting with the letter A. We were looking for the automaton. That is a very primal uh, robot that sort of just, 
you know, performs one function automatically over and over again in an automaton. In B, we're looking for the application of natural principles to robotics. It is bionics, that's right. Uh, and there it is right there, bio as your root. And finally, uh, starting with the letter C, we got a cyborg combining both human and robotic parts. Give yourself a point for each of those. Uh, that's three more points to add to your score if you got them all. And I'll see you back at the front menu. Lots of great suggestions coming in the chat. We've got uh, Life on the Chain Gang, Celluloids, what a character. And this is the order they're going to be uh, coming at you in. Uh, as per the uh, chat picks, you guys have chosen Celluloids, what a character, and Life on the Chain Gang as your final one, as it normally goes at these games. Again, thank you so much for being here tonight. Don't forget, of course, to hit that like button if you enjoyed the show. It does do us a bit of a favor if you do that. And if you have not done so yet, subscribe to our channel. We release a lot of trivia. As a matter of fact, every day we are releasing definitely one quiz whether it's a live show like this one or quizzes all about pop culture for example yesterday we released a uh, 25 question quiz all about the simpsons tomorrow it's all about james bond and on saturday morning three yes not one not two but three quizzes about nintendo we got one about the nes the snes and the n64 so Make sure you do hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and share it with friends who might enjoy this. This is my wrestling impression for some reason. I don't know why I keep flexing my arms, but I'm getting really, really, really into this. We've got ourselves your next one, Celluloids. Coming up next, a very special category of Diloids. A Diloid is a, a puzzle, uh, which is an abbreviation of a common expression or saying. For example, in the category of measurements, if I said 12 equals I in a F, you would say, ah, 12 equals inches in a foot. You may have seen these before, often in the uh, form of uh, Christmas carols for some reason. Uh, I believe this is called celluloids because these might also be uh, movie titles. Don't take my word for it. I'm this guy. Let's take a look at what we've got coming up here. All right, this is definitely all movie titles. We've got 12M with BW and BP with, of course, meaning the actors. So we're looking for the movie title with what actors? Once again, that these are abbreviations. The movie title possibly and probably contains a number, and then we followed it up with some of the actors to give you a hint. Fill in the entire abbreviation to get your one. Let's take a look at your next one. T40YOV, that's the movie, with SC, that's one of the actors. The movie is T40YOV, and the hint, with SC, that's the actor. A bit of a more puzzly sort of round, and uh, that's what uh, this game is all about. Mixing it up with the trivia and the puzzles. <laughs> what language is this? Very <laughs> valid question, my friend. It is Ditloid language. Let's take a look at the last one. We're talking about a movie here. 13GO30 with JG. Is this Elon Musk's new name? <laughs> new kid's name. <laughs> That's great. That, that should have been one. I'm going to try to find to see if I can find a Ditloid that matches Elon Musk's uh, name. We've 
very good call. Thank you so much, Student Center, for letting me know about that. Uh, yes, drop uh, some ideas of themes and whatnot that you would love to see as quizzes. We're looking to do these for you. I mean, you can tune into our channel at any time and just play any of the quizzes uh, that we've put up. And uh, trust me, there are over 100 different quizzes that you can play. But if you have any suggestions of any themes you would like to see uh, done as a theme, make sure you do uh, put it in the quiz in the chat here. We will take a look at that. We're taking note of all of that. And uh, we will uh, definitely uh, try to get a uh, theme night going for you guys. That'd be great times. Let's take a look at the answers coming up for these sell you Lloyds. These were did Lloyds that all have uh, to do with movie titles. And uh, the first one went something like this. It was 12 Monkeys with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. That's what we're looking for. And you need the entire thing. Come on now. Be cool. Be honest with yourself. You need the entire thing to give yourself one point. 12 Monkeys with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. There you go. Number two, we're talking about the 40-year-old virgin with Steve Carell. I think more of you had a chance with that one, uh, considering, I don't know, I felt it. I felt it. And here comes number three, 13 going on 30. This was, this was a, a swish, a swish. It was a lob, a lob, if you will. Uh, 13 going on 30 with Jennifer Garner. Give yourself a point for each of these that you got correct. The one, the green, the yellow, the red. And uh, I'll see you guys back at the front. Don't forget, of course, to tally your scores. And feel free to uh, share your score in the chat, as some of you are doing. We've got some three out of threes over here, some two out of threes. Two out of three is really good for a round like that, I got to say. What a character. This one goes out to Amon. You really wanted this round. You wanted it, buddy. And this one's for you. This one goes out to you. What a character. What a character you are, I'm sure. Uh, for each pair, uh, picture, uh, I want you to identify the anthropomorphic character's name. Why did I throw that in there? Because I wanted to feel smart. And I wanted to be a lot like, oh, I know what this word means. I'm going to use it. But honestly, these are all characters that uh, are not human, but have been given human qualities. There are five of them. This is the only one, by the way, that you should be keeping some space on whatever device you are typing because you will need five answers for this one uh, for each picture identify the anthropomorphic character's name ready set Peggy. Remember, there are five of them coming up in this round. This is only number one. Good catch, Ahmed. Good catch. I love this movie right here. This, this is a great movie. And there you have it. That is the end of what a character. What a character. 
you had five questions there, five characters that were anthropomorphic. I'm, that's very hard to say. Anthropomorphic. Anthropomorphic? Anthropomorphic. Ah, it's not that hard to say. It's just me. Uh, lock in those answers. We got five of them coming up for five points or 500 points. I don't know how you're calculating your score. Five, 500, five million points. Whatever base you're going on, just don't go hexadecimal on us. That'll be really complicated. All right, it goes like this. The first character we're looking for, it is Lightning McQueen. Fun fact, French movies, they call him Flash McQueen. Doesn't work with lightning. Doesn't work. Yeah, that's for real. Uh, we got Cogsworth coming in at number two for that. Number three, Baymax. Absolutely love that movie. Give yourself a point for Baymax. We got Nick Wilde, the, uh, what did we call it? The cutest fox in Zootopia. Hey, eh? uh, that's what, uh, that was the, uh, that was the uh, consensus over here. And we've got ourselves a Forky coming in at number five. Give yourself a point for each of those. We've got one more game left in this half. I know, I know, but guess what? Oh, it's not over yet. We got a whole other half ready to go. Trust me, we're gonna have a great time. Feel free to share those scores in the chat, of course. And if you haven't done so, please do subscribe. There should be a button somewhere, whether it's like somewhere over here, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's over here. Maybe, I, oh, oh, hold on a thing. I think I got it. I think it's like right there. This is really hard to do. I don't know what I'm pointing at. But uh, make sure you do hit that subscribe button because uh, we release all sorts of stuff. We, we, had, uh, two, we have two office trivias on there. We have a Friends and we have Friends Part 2 coming up. Uh, we do trivia about all. We do have sports on Sundays as well. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a lot of fun too. We have a whole Bulls one going on right now because I'm totally, I'm not even a sports fan. I'm totally into that Last Dance thing on Netflix. It's been insane. And just for that, we, you know, we got to have a Chicago Bulls one for sure. So take a take a look around the channel. I, I do hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. It feels like you are. What a great community of people just in the chat right now. It looks like uh, everyone's been uh, really great. So, uh, you know, and let your uh, U of O student center, uh, U of O, U of W uh, student center, that is a force of habit. I went to the University of Ottawa. I, I apologize. I love Windsor. It's my new home. Uh, University of Windsor student center, uh, you know, they're the ones who put this together. And, uh, we, you know, we're talking about doing this a lot. So uh, spread the word. That's the one thing. We're going to have to get a, a bunch of people playing. And uh, as long as we do that, Hey, speaking of let's keep doing it, Life on the Chain Gang is next. It is a signature game, and I'm glad that it is last because it is your high-scoring game of the night. Chain Gang goes like this. In each box, I'm going to give you five words. The three in the middle contain blanks, and those are the ones I want you to figure out. Now, here's the thing. You can use every word with the next one to form a common expression or saying. For example, here, we've got runaway away team team player player one you see how that goes well in the next uh, three boxes we're gonna do that in the next in each box you can gain three points because there'll be three words to figure out so this whole round is out of 900 points if you're ready let's get started with number one All right, I gave you a few extra seconds on that last one, and also I was reveling in those beautiful comments in the chat section. Let's take a look at number two. Figure out these three words for your life on the chain gang. Seconds on this one. I know you're not used to this game, 
some of the regulars, they got the hang of it so far, but this is your first time. We're gonna give you a few extra seconds here. Remember that you can use uh, every word with the next one to form a common expression or saying, here's my trick I always tell people, don't always start from the top. If the first two seem confusing, go to the bottom and try to see if you can work your way up. Ah, let's take a look at number two, uh, three. Hey, I like Lindsay's idea. Uh, say it out loud. Hey, that's a great idea, Lindsay. I like that. I'm going to use that in future shows, by the way. So please, yeah, yeah, come and see me if you hear me say that. Like, I'm the one who came up with that. That's cool. Yeah, say it out loud. I say work from the bottom sometimes. You know, you get stuff from the top, work from the bottom. Well, you know what? I think I gave you uh, enough time on that one. Nine possible points. You know, even if you get three out of this, that's still 300 points being added to your score. So... Let's hope that this goes well for you. Let's take a look at the answers I was looking for. It goes a little something like this. We're looking for jump start, start over, overdone, and done deal. There you go. Now you're going to give yourself one point for each of the words that are in caps uh, that are on this uh, square right here. So start, over, done. Those are your three. Uh, for each of those that you got correct, give yourself a point. We got uh, number two coming up. Make do, due date, a date square, possibly the best dessert in the world. That's right. Argue with me. Go ahead. Go. Try. Try arguing with me. And then square one. There you have it. And uh, your last one, we have power lunch, lunch box, box car and car horn maybe uh, one of the tougher chain gangs i've done okay fair 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 this is a tough one i'll give you an easier one next time but you're gonna love this game by the uh, tw by the second or third time you play this game you're gonna absolutely love it you're absolutely going to love it give yourself a point for each word you guessed correctly so out of 900 points or nine points or nine billion points whatever your basis may be Give yourself those scores, tally them up, and uh, hey, why don't you let us know in the chat what your total score is for this half, because yes, that is the end of this half of Seriously Trivia on YouTube. We're going to take a short, short break right now. Uh, time enough for you to uh, freshen up, go get another drink, uh, do whatever you need to do, and come back, because we've got another Ten, uh, eight categories uh, coming up for Seriously Trivia on YouTube. For you guys, the University of Windsor, the Lancers, thank you to the Student Center for putting this together. We'll be right back with the second half of Seriously Trivia on YouTube. Share your scores. I want to know your halfway scores in the chat. Do it uh, like this. I should be doing this, right? I don't know. I'm new at this. Just, you know, give me a break. Come on.
Hey, we are back. I see you guys are chatting in the chat. I love this uh, stuff. I love that you guys are loving the trivia. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, that's what I mean. Uh, this is what I'm here for. I started doing this, uh, you know, I've been doing trivia uh, in public and in bars for like nine years, but uh, ever since this COVID thing hit, you know, I started doing it online and it's been going uh, really, really great. And, uh, you know, it's people like you who just keep it going. They're like, hey, this is great. I love doing this. Uh, you know, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Somebody was asking about the music in the background. I know. It's crazy, right? It's this guy, Kevin McLeod. I'll tell you right now, that's my secret. Kevin McLeod, he's, uh, he basically just does uh, royalty-free music uh, for stuff like this. And uh, you can find him on Spotify and stuff. This is where I'm getting it. Some of them are just very generic. Some of them are definitely fire, as has been quoted in the chat. Hey, everybody. Uh, here it's Wednesday night. It's it's getting there. It's getting there. We're halfway through. Uh, a huge cheers to you guys for uh, being here. Uh, thank you very much to the University of Windsor uh, for putting this together. And uh, cheers to you guys. Uh, we're gonna get started. It's a uh, it's it's the second half. I want to call it round two, but I don't know. It feels weird. Hmm. I love this ska. <laughs> Right, Madison? You're absolutely right. This is why I'm here. I'll provide both. I will keep doing both. I'll do the uh, the live and I'll do the uh, in, in the house. Because you know what? I love hosting trivia, but sometimes I just want to host it from my basement. Uh, A.K.A. Backflash Studios. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Once again, a reminder on how you could win prizes tonight. Take a pic of your setup. Uh, you know, you and your PJs <laughs> playing trivia on your laptop whatever you got some people are wearing togas maybe people went full formal but make sure you do uh, tag trivia night with at u of w student center uh and don't forget of course as a courtesy to me hashtag mac flash trivia that'd be super duper cool uh do that on instagram and uh, if you don't got instagram it's fine do it on facebook find them on, on facebook do the same and i'm on facebook as well that's right just recently reach 1700 people who like me go figure yeah i know way to go mac flash uh you can also submit your final score at the end of this half uh to a u of w student center make sure you do it by 10 45 because after that they don't want to hear they don't want to hear about this they're like yeah trivia night was last night give it up give it up okay you got drunk you forgot to submit your score you know what happens you lose uh, random players in the chat are still to be drawn throughout the live game. I don't think I missed any of them. I did uh, kind of leave at one point to go get a beer. So uh, hopefully that sort of stuff took care of itself. I got some people. I got some people in the chat working on this for me. So that's how you can win some prizes tonight. If you're ready, let's play this next round of Seriousement, c'est le trivia. That's how they say in French. Seriousement. Seriousement, c'est le trivia. We got same different coming up. Ooh. Initial reaction. I love this game. That's one of my favorite games. Uh, we got first impressions coming up. We got songs in the key of back. It's alive. I think you're supposed to say it like that. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. A hard quiz. We had an easy quiz. Time for a hard quiz. We got a net gain and whack works. I call that one whack works. Uh, call them out, baby. Call them out because quick, 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 quick. I got my whiteboard ready to go, and I want to know what you guys want to uh, see. Net gain, boom. That's how we start. No net gain. Do you even live, bro? Do you even live? We got some. Uh, there he goes. Net gain. You guys shout him out in the chat, and I'll uh, pick it up. We we'll go whack, whack coming up next. Oh, that's right. And then we got uh, song, song. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to keep writing them down after you guys start playing the first one. Net gain. Thank you so much to... Oh, now it's trying to be all cool. Thanks to Jasleen for picking that one up. Net gain. The answers will all contain the letter combination N-E-T somewhere in the word. It could be at the beginning, at the end, in the middle, at the three quarters, at the six eighths, at the three twelfths, wherever it may be. Three twelfths, not just a quarter. Uh, they all have N-E-T somewhere in them. Let's take a look at these answers. 
questions. The French term for the pastry, referred to as a fritter in English, contains the letter combination N-E-T. This song, this song is insane right now. Let's take a look at uh, question number two. A 14 line poem, usually with 10 beats or syllables per line. And finally, here comes question number three for net gain. Fast and energetic in a rather wild and uncontrolled way, much like this song. Well, there you have it, a net gain, a fun category indeed. We love to do these categories with a bit of a hint to them. That's what Seriously Trivia is all about. It's about having a lot of fun uh, while playing a game show at home. Make sure you do check out uh, Friday night's game at 8 o'clock for another uh, great experience of Seriously Trivia. Okay, lock in your answers. Here comes a net gain, the answers. Sounds like the sequel. And again, and again, the answers. Number two, uh, number one, we had beignets. Beignets, that's right. Uh, N-E-T right there at the end. Uh, and that is the uh, French term for a fritter. They're delicious. Mm. Mm. So good. You're absolutely right. Uh, number two, uh, sonnet. A sonnet is the poem we were looking for with N-E-T in the name. And finally, number three, frenetic. That one last song definitely had a frenetic pace. I just picture someone running so fast they almost lose control of their feet. That's what frenetic, sonically, that's what that word says to me. All right, everybody, give yourself a point for each and uh, tally that up, uh, not only for this half, but to the total of your score for the final score because that's how you could win some prizes tonight. Don't forget of all the ways you could do it, uh, you can submit your score to the U of W Student Center Instagram account. You can take a photo of yourself playing this game and make sure you do tag the appropriate people or just be present in the chat and at some point we might be able to draw your name as that next up we get whack works coming up because that's what was called and uh we will uh then see what else is next i got whack works songs first impressions and same name those are the first that's the first half right there that's already been picked or more than the first half so we'll have to see but right now whack works Wackworks is going to be a fun one because it is your picture round. These are all terrible wax statues. I know this could literally be very suggestive. You, you're suggestive. It could be suggestive. I wish it was. And that's a whole other trivia that we're going to have to do at some point. It's not going to be whack works at that point. It's something to do with whack, but that's not what it is. Uh, what we're going to be doing here is, I, I, I meant to say it could be subjective. Meaning, yes, you might have different ideas. But what I want you to tell me is who these statues were supposed to be. There are definite correct answers. I'm going to show you five terrible wax statues of celebrities you tell me who they're supposed to be and you'll get a point if you're ready there's five of them and it starts with number one. No, oh, dear lord
<laughs> I love how somebody was in the chat was like, somebody was like, oh, well, at least they're getting better. And then that last one came up. <laughs> it's like, <"Ugh." laughs> my, my. You know what? There's going to be some dispute, and I'm waiting for it in the chat. But I'm telling you, as per my research, there's certain people that these photos were supposed to be. And that's who I'm going to be, you know, being final about. Because, you know, people can look like people, but uh, and statues could look like statues. So no matter what comes up, my answer is going to be the ones that get you points. You might be right in the fact that, you know, those statues look like that person. But, you know, when it comes to points and to the game and to the prizes, we're going to go with these. Okay, if you're ready, let's take a look at uh, your answers for whack works. That's whack. I'm just uh, seeing Hannibal Buress in that one. We got Tom Hanks in number one, of course. We had the good old Tom Hanks there he was doing that thing. Uh, we have Jennifer Gardner in Gardner, not Gardner. She, Jennifer Gardner is the one in my yard. Jennifer Gardner is this one. Uh, and we had Jack Black as Nacho Libre in at number three. We had Oprah coming in at number four. And that last one was definitely uh, a very different Miley Cyrus. Yes. Ouch. Ouch. I mean, you know what? You know what? I'm not even going to... I'm going to go... I'm just going to hide right here. I'm going to hide right here. You guys did all right on that. I love seeing this. We get a lot of five out of five and all sorts of uh, vibes over here. This is great. This is great. All right, guys. I've got songs that I've got first impressions and then I've got same different coming up after that it'll be up to you to choose whatever comes up next let's take a look at your songs in the key of it's songs in the key of innuendo all right innuendo this is great this is uh, questions about not so subtle sexy songs usually innuendo is a little bit more subtle it's a little you know this not so subtle not so subtle let's take a look at these three uh not so subtle sexy songs number one to what song does austin powers perform the strip tease which disables the fembots in the first movie I have to apologize to everyone for that Tom Hanks uh, that wax statue. Uh, quite, quite unfair. Definitely unfair. <laughs> Let's take a look at your next one for his songs in the key of innuendo. Uh, what Canadian singer had a creative shift when she released her third album, Loose, including the hit Promiscuous? And finally, your last song. I know, I know, but here it is. Whose 1991 single Let's Talk About Sex raised awareness about safe sex and even had an alternate version all about AIDS. Looking for the artist. There you have it. That is your songs in the key of innuendo. We're looking for three songs uh, from definitely a different era. Let's take a look. Lock in those answers and see if you were able to come up with the correct ones that we were looking for. The first one what was a song with innuendo. I touch myself is the song that Austin Powers dances to in order to strip tease and disable the fembots. That was my impression of him flashing his chest and also the fembots machine gun boots that's it that's my impression of it right here yeah without locking eye contact it's creepier that way we got ourselves uh, nelly furtado who's all like i'm like a bird 
And then she was all like, uh, uh, promiscuous, uh, uh, I'm loose, uh, 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 oily video. I don't know what, what was up with that, but Nelly Furtado had a weird shift in careers. That's all I have to say. Salt and pepper, let's talk about sex, hey, me, let's talk about you and me. That was, rendition was so good, it's probably going to flag the copyright censors, I'll tell you what. But yes, these are the answers we're looking for. I touch myself, Nelly Furtado, salt and a papa. Give yourself a point for each, and uh, I'm just going to mosey over to the front menu there. We had like five categories left, so let's keep moving right now with your next one. We had first impressions as your choice, then we got same uh, different, and then we still got initial reaction to Heart Quiz and It's Alive. All three of them are uh, left for you to pick. No one's picked any of those. No one. No one. No. No. Let's go to first impressions. Name the movie based on the opening line. I'm going to give you the first opening line of a movie. You name what that movie is. I know. It was pretty obvious from the first time I said it, but my job is to repeat things twice. The best food in France is made in Paris. And the best food in Paris, some say, is made by Chef Auguste Gusteau. the movie based on this opening line. Next up we got number two in first impressions. What movie starts with the line, we were somewhere around Barstow on the edge of the desert when the drugs began to take hold. finally at number three as far back as I can remember I always wanted to be a gangster what movie starts with this line there you have it that is first impressions you were naming the movie based on the first line hopefully you did all right these were classics but definitely classics if you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying log in those answers let's take a look here we were looking for the uh, following the first one is from the movie ratatouille as i say very frenchly ratatouille as they said in pixar world uh, in number two, we were looking for a train spotting. That is not true. That is not true. That is a mistake. And that is not at all what the first, that is not at all what it should be. That should be fear and loathing in Las Vegas. There's a mistake there. Whoever did that will be fired. Was that? It was me. Oh, crap. Looks like I was just fired, guys. I'm sorry. So that should say fear in loathing in fear and loathing in Las Vegas. That's what that should say. Uh, number three is definitely not a mistake. Not a mistake. Good fellas. Good fellas. Any of you watching on mute? Well, too bad. You didn't hear that correction for number two, and you're gonna be like, oh my god, that's not what it was. It definitely wasn't drink spotting. It was something else. And I was like, I know. That's what I said. Fear and loathing. Booyah, Shibuya. All right, so we got some development uh, from the Student Center in the chat. So, of course, make sure you do take a look at that as to uh, how the uh, scores and uh, the points are going to work for the prizes. Uh, we are heading back to the front, of course, with our final four left in the game. 
thank you so much. I do appreciate everyone stick around. Uh, make sure you do hit that like button uh, at, at any point during the game uh, so that we do know that you enjoyed tonight's game and you come back on uh, a regular basis to check out the Mac Flash trivia that uh, I'm putting out on this channel uh, Mondays, Wednesdays at 7 and Fridays at 8 and of course all of the other fun trivias that I am doing throughout the week. So make sure you do come out and check that. We got uh, Same Different coming up next. That is what we chose. After that, be ready to shout out. I want to know what you want to see. Initial reaction, a hard quiz, or it's a live. Give me the order for that coming up next. But Same Different is going to work like this. You know what homophones are. They have the same sound, but different meanings. Uh, and in this case, possibly even different spellings, uh, but they will fit the blanks. What I'm going to do is give you a sentence with two blanks. You need to fill those two blanks with homophones, words that have the same sound with two completely different meanings uh, that fit within the context of that sentence. We're gonna do that three times. You're gonna get a point for each you get correct because they do sound alike. I'm not gonna give you a point uh, for each word. So one per blank out of three. Let's take a look at your first one. When you blank something in your essay, you have to indicate the source, whether it's a book or online blank. Fill those two blanks with two words that are completely different, except sound the same, but have different meanings. Once again, find the homophones that to fill in these blanks. Once we had the blank written, we could move blank with the publication. Two words that sound the same, but are spelt differently and mean different things. Okay, you're absolutely correct. This is it. This is for you, you English majors. Finally, it's coming into handy. I love me a word game. I love me a good word game. Here's your last one. He was leery of this crooked contractor. He didn't want to get blank for things the guy didn't blank. There you have it. That is the uh, end of same same name, different game, uh, where you had to find homophones that fit in those blanks within the context of the sentence that sounded the same, but were spelled differently and meant different things. If you're ready, let's take a look at those answers. The first one, cite. If you're going to uh, cite anything in your essay, you have to make sure you include it in the bibliography even though it's an online site. There you go, site and site. Give yourself one point for the pair because, you know, once you got it, if you said it, you should figure it out. So you don't get two points. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Uh, number two, forward. Once we had the forward written, we could move forward with the publication. Terrible model of book writing, but it worked uh, within the context of the game. And next, uh, I don't want to be uh, build for things that the guy didn't build. So there you go, build and build. So side, side, forward, forward, build, build. Give yourself a point for each pair. And out of 300, share your score in the chat. Tally it up to your final score because we are heading towards the end of this game. And uh, I want to remind everybody of all the different ways there are to uh, get some prizes tonight. 
you can either just take a picture of yourself and tag it uh, appropriately with U of W Student Center. Uh, that is at U of W Student Center, of course. Make sure you tag them in the uh, photo. Tag Mac Flash Trivia while you're at it. You know what I'm saying? That's one way you can get surprises. You can also submit your final score by the end of the game. Uh, make sure you do uh, submit that by 1045 to the Instagram account U of W student center uh and uh, also uh you can uh, be uh, picked in the chat here randomly to win a prize so fun times tonight thank you so much spread the word of how much fun you had tonight and make sure you do subscribe to the channel so that you can come back and also if uh we decide to have another one of these next month i want you guys here because you've been a great audience what do we have next what's next we got uh, it's a live initial reaction a hard quiz. I looked down and I saw initial reaction. Let's do it. This is the high scoring game of the night. It goes like this. These people all share initials. Now in each box, do I'm going to give you three descriptions of three different people who share a set of initials. I want you to give each of their names. Now here's the deal. I'm not gonna give you their initials. I'm not gonna do that. No, because I want you to figure it out. One of them is gonna be obvious enough that you're gonna say, I know who that is. I know their initials. Now let's figure out the other ones. That's the point. In every box, a different set of initials, nine possible points going to your team for this. Let's take a look at your first one. The first one wrote orange is the new black theme. You've got time. The next one is the alien movie creator. And the last one is the American Idol host. They all share a set of initials. Name them all. seconds on that one because uh, you know it's only fair <clears throat> all right here comes number two for initial reaction uh, these uh, next people share a different set of initials uh, I mean different from the first box here but uh, same set here uh, leader of the heartbreakers the bullhorn laden TV carpenter and half of South Park's creators. These three people share a set of initials. Name each person. And finally, in your third box, these three people share the same set of initials. Who are they? The governor of Alaska from 2006 to 2009. The guy who plays Sean in Shaun of the Dead. And Chicago Bulls number 33. All of them share the same set of initials. Can you name each person? Question mark. Tough round, tough round. I get the feeling this was a little tougher, but guess what? It doesn't matter, it's out of nine possible points, which means even if you get 300, you're adding 300 to your score. Look at it that way. Plus, it's trivia. You're not supposed to know everything. You're just supposed to know more than everyone else. That's all that matters. All right, lock in your answers. Let's take a look. We were looking for nine possible answers, and they were these. In each box, they all shared a different set of initials. Regina Spector, Ridley Scott, and Ryan Seacrest. Give yourself one point for each you got right. So this box right here is worth three points. So give yourself a point for each one. Uh, next one, we had Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Ty Pennington, the Carpenter with the Bullhorn, and Trey Parker of South 
apart. All TPs. We got ourselves uh, number three coming up as well. Sarah Palin, Simon Pegg, and Scotty Pippen. This whole round right here out of 900 points for you. I say that because that's the habit. We go out of hundreds. Uh, but counted for uh, nine points. Give yourself a point for each one you got correct and add it to your total score. We've got two games left uh, in this game. In, uh, we got a hard game and it's alive uh, coming at you. All right, let's go with uh, It's Alive coming up next as picked by you guys in the chat. It's Alive is a television category all about resurrected television. You know those shows, it's a newer for, uh, thing that uh, I, uh, you know we just started seeing most recently about shows that get canceled, the petitions on the internet, and then the shows get brought back on a different uh, network or maybe the same network. Here's questions about the resurrected television. This raunchy animated comedy was originally on the air from 1999 to 2002, but DVD sales brought it back in 2005. Number 2. What mother-daughter series ran from 2000 to 2007, then returned for a four-part miniseries in 2016? And finally, number three. What sci-fi series sought the truth from 1993 to 2002, then returned for a little more from 2016 to 2018? That is It's Alive! Questions about resurrected television. Hopefully you were able to come up with the answers for these rounds. Uh, and uh, by the uh, tone in the chat, it looks pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. So you look at your answers, let's compare them to mine, the correct ones. I don't, I'm not, I don't mean to brag, but I mean... I wrote this thing. Uh, we got Family Guy coming in uh, first. One of the first shows that I do remember myself uh, personally seeing, uh, you know, resurrected through a petition like that where, you know, I've never seen that before where it was like a show got canceled, it got canceled. But no, nope, this one came back. Number two, we had the Gilmore Girls, the mother-daughter show. Should have been the giveaway there. But Gilmore Girls did come back for a bit of a miniseries on Netflix uh, after it was done in its regular run and finally we had the x-files came back for a little bit more with the original cast uh and there you have it those are your three television shows we were looking for give yourself a point for each family guy gilmore girls the x-files and uh, we got one more game it's a hard quiz you guys kept it till last because it was called hard wow that was your mistake who knows who knows how hard it's gonna be Thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone for being here tonight and making sure to uh, tune in to Mac Flash Trivia. Thank you to the uh, University of Windsor Student Center for putting together this night. Please let your student center know how much you enjoyed it, but also tell your friends how much you enjoyed it so that they can come back because as much people and as many people as we get doing this, the more we can keep doing it. You can always play trivia with us on Mac Flash, of course, so make sure you do follow 
and subscribe to the Mac Flash YouTube channel so you can find out all the different trivias that we are putting out every day. I'm not lying. Every day, sometimes more than one a day. So once again, thank you to the University of Windsor and thank you to their students for uh, you guys for being here tonight and playing along with me. We got a hard quiz coming up and, uh, well, it's not necessarily going to be hard. I mean, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but they're definitely all going to be about the word hard. Let's take a look at question number one. In a dice game, especially craps, what does it mean to get a hard eight? Number two in the hard quiz. What Canadian comedy has spawned or popularized many expressions such as, that's a hard no. And finally, in a hard quiz, Jay-Z's Ghetto Anthem samples what song from a classical musical film about a poor orphan? There you have it, and thank you to so much for uh, thank you so much to everyone in the chat tonight for uh, you know letting us know what you think, for feeding back, for keeping the community alive. This is kind of fun. I don't have an audience in front of me. It's really weird. I'm just kind of doing this in the studio, and there's no one. But your chat is what reminds me that there are people watching. There are people who care, and uh, this is how I get to connect uh, with people during this whole self isolation thing. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for being in the chat, and all of your suggestions are great, and especially the compliments, comments, and uh, and everything else you have to say. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, let's take a look at your answers for the hard quiz. We have got ourselves three answers coming up right now, and it goes like this. The first one, two fours is the hard eight, because it is the hardest way to get an eight. A hard six would be two threes, because there's many ways you can get one. The hardest ways to get two identical so two fours is what i was looking for uh number two letter kenny is the canadian comedy that has uh, popularized uh, that's a hard no and uh, such other uh, expressions of course and in number three we're looking at it's a hard knock life it's a hard knock life for us it's a hard knock life Anyway, so on and so forth. Uh, that is a song sampled in the Jay-Z song. Guys, tally your scores. Tell me what you got in the final chat. Go, put it out there. But don't forget, of course, to send it in to the U of W Student Center at U of W Student Center. That is uh, Instagram account. Send them that through uh, PM or DM or whatever you want to call it. Private message, direct message. Let them know what your score was, what your team is. They're going to want your information uh, once they figure out who the actual winner is. Uh, let's get back to the front here. That has been this Seriously Trivia brought to you by Mac Flash Entertainment. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Francois. I have been your host. Don't forget to subscribe, please, using the uh, little red button right here in the corner if that happens to be the case. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit share, do all that stuff. Come back to me. Come back to me, baby. I'll see you on Friday at 8 o'clock here for more Seriously Trivia and then on Mondays and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. Don't forget to take a look around the channel. Before you go, There's uh, we have an office quiz, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We have one about the Muppets, 80s cartoons, 90s cartoons. We just put one out about Batman, The Simpsons. Dude, name it. We got it. This is how it rolls. We'll see you next time on Mac Flash Trivia. Bye-bye.